Welcome everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today we will talk about business analyst with healthcare domain. How important is domain knowledge? For a business analyst, this is often asked question. So I decided to dedicate a full video on this topic. So let's start. How important is domain knowledge for a business analyst? If you are an entry-level business analyst, you are not expected to possess domain knowledge in details, but if you have that, that's always good. Understanding of requirements, capturing techniques, UL modeling, unified modeling language, requirement analysis, and SRS understanding are more important as an entry-level business analyst. So if you are new to business analysis, you should not worry too much about the domain knowledge, but you must focus on gaining domain knowledge as you start working as a business analyst. There are a few myths about a business analyst career. So let's explore that and let's find a truth about it. A business analyst always work in an office, it totally false. Business analysts work from home. Some of them are freelancers you know, rather than to be a full-time employer for a public or private organizations. Myth number two is business analysts are developers. Well, having an IT background, it's always good, but not necessary. While knowledge of technology is currently on asset, this role does not necessarily require that you write codes. Instead, as the name of this job suggests, business analyst, it is about analyzing of a business from understanding their requirements to functional testing to improve process. If you have a good background in IT as a Q analyst and if you have some basic, it will be easy for you to communicate with the developers easily. You must know myth number three, you must know everything about a, either a healthcare or finance or any other domain to secure your job. Domain knowledge is always good. But definitely, as an entry level, you will gain this knowledge by your experience. So don't worry about that. There are a lot of myths out there, but these three were more important. So I just want to give you the truth about these myths. There are a few tips for the newbie business analyst. If you got a job, make sure come to the job with a set of tools and always ready to transform into something of value to immediately show your stakeholder that they made the right decision when they choose you for the job. Be prepared and go above and beyond on the call of the duty. This is very important to know when to keep silent and start by asking questions, except when you are wrong because you have a long way to go. Be appropriate, functional and relevant. You are not going to be a newbie business analyst for so long. This is temporary. So just keep doing well and keep reminding your stakeholders why you are the best person for the job. As a business analyst, you need to know a little bit about healthcare domain. If you started your project, then you need to know what is healthcare what is health insurance, components of health insurance, type of health insurance. We will talk in detail related to healthcare domain of business analysts. So let's talk about what is healthcare. The act of taking preventive or necessary medical procedures to improve a person's well-being. You know, this may be done with surgery, administrating of medicine, or other alteration in personal lifestyle. Those services are typically offered through a healthcare system made up of hospitals and physicians, and definitely with the aid of computer system and medical labs. What is health information technology? We also call this HIT. This is very important, so please focus. HIT referred to health information technology is the application of information technology to healthcare. This refers to the electronic system that healthcare professionals 
and sometimes patient used to store, share, and analyze health information. It's another way to describe comprehensive management of information among patient, practitioners, government, quality entities, and insurers. A long time ago, healthcare departments, they used to document everything on the paper. Then these systems created by the IT. There are two types of HIT. One is EHR and what is EMR. We are gonna focus on EHR more. Electronic healthcare records. EHR means electronic healthcare records and focus on the documentation and storage of pa uh, patients' medical information. Well, I already told you in past, clinics had to document everything on paper by hand. Now they can simply fill out the information on their computer or mobile devices like vaccination, fitness, physiotherapy, medical records. What is EMR, electronic medical records? They can, uh, you can store medical incidents on it, outpatient visit, dental visit. So let's, we will focus on EHR. So let's talk about what is health insurance? There are different types of health insurance companies. Health insurance is insurance against the risk of incurring medical expenses. You know, for example, if you have insurance and if you have to go through a surgical process, procedures, and sometime, you know, if you have to go through a dental procedures and all that, health insurance will is a type of insurance coverage. Health insurance can reimburse the insured for expenses incurred from the illness or injury or pay the care provided directly. Patient, provider, and payer. This is a life cycle. Patient, any recipient of healthcare service performed by healthcare professionals. So patient is gonna go to the provider and provider is going to send the claim to the payer. This is a cycle. So for example, if someone gets sick and he's a patient, he has to go through some surgical process, the medicines, the procedure, they use it, you know, and uh, in the hospital, it can be hospital, it can be a uh, single physician, it can be practitioner, it can be practitioner groups, it can be institution, it can be labs, it can be nursing home. And then once they are done with that procedure or, you know, uh, then uh, what the healthcare provider will do that provides healthcare or medical care service for a fee. So they will submit their claim to the payer. And these claims are CMS 1500, UBO4, ADA, and PDP, but remember CMS 1500 UBO4 uh, is very important. CMS 1500 is for medical, uh, Medicaid and Medicare, and UBO4 is for the private insurances. So these are the claims we, we will be focusing on uh, in our further uh, videos. So claim processes and all that. So to appear or an invoice and get reimbursed for that service. So who's gonna reimburse it? You know, it will go to the payer and we will know all the reimbursement process and the claim processes and all that. As a business analyst, you need to know these things by heart. So the payer we already talked about, a healthcare generated effort to entities other than the patient that finance or reimburse the cost of health services. In most cases, this term referred to insurance carrier, other third party payers or health plan sponsors, employers or unions. Payer organization focused on managing the gap between the funding and the medical costs, often in the context of a changing regulatory environment. So it can be, you know, um, environment at the state and the federal level. It can be HMO, PPO, Medicaid, Medicare insurance companies who pays for the treatment. So, you know, again, we will go back and patient, payer, patient, provider, and payer. Okay, always remember that that's like a cycle. In healthcare domain, as a business analyst, you need to know 
these basic things and you will be fine. In this video, we will talk about what is health insurance, component of health insurance, type of health insurance coverages, HMO, PPO, POS, NPI, you know, provider, payer, we already talk about patient, but we will talk about NPI too. In my next video, we will talk about how this claim process work because as a business analyst, you need to know this adjudication system, claim processes system, facets are the software they use it for claim processes. All the claims, uh, like uh, you need to know the codes, ICD-9 versus, uh, versus ICD-10. ICD-9 used to be an older code, but ICD-10 is the advanced code. And all, the, all this in a very, small manner you don't have to go in too much of details and all that so components of health insurance there are expenses definitely involved in health insurance and the types of health insurance we're going to talk about so if either your employer is giving you a health insurance or if you are getting a private health insurance you will go through the expenses expenses are involved insurance coverage like premium deductible co-payment coinsurance exclusion coverage limits out of pocket maximums and capitation and we will talk about this in detail and then what type of health insurances you know uh, hmo ppo pos plans these are called the managed care plans and the indemnity plans are non-managed plans. We will talk about that too. So there are vision, dental health insurance, Medicare, Medicaid. These are the uh, insurance which government provided. So they remember we talked about CME, CMS 1500 codes are used for these type of insurances and all that. So for vision, they are different insurances for dental insurance they are different so let's talk about the expenses which are involved in health insurance coverage what is premium you need to know what is premium uh, when your insurance companies start talking to you what will be your premium what will be your deductible and what will be your copayment well premium amount uh, the policyholder are his sponsor like uh, for example an employer pays to health plan to purchase health coverage okay the total amount of it and then the deductible will be the amount that the insured must pay out of pocket before the health insurance pays here like for example policyholder might have to pay a 500 deductible per year before any of their health care is covered by the insurer Okay, so sometimes it may take several doctor visits or prescription refills, you know, you will be able to. So always remember that higher the deductible is not a good insurance. Make sure your deductible is less so your insurance can kick in much earlier than that. In co-payment, the insured person might pay either it can be $20 for a visit or a $30 co-payment for a doctor visit. Sometimes some insurance are very good that, you know, if you will just go for your physical, you don't even have to pay the co-payment. But the amount that the insured person must pay out of pocket before the health insurers pay for the particular visit or service, that is called co-payment. A co-payment must be paid each time a particular service is obtained. So we already talked about it. What is coinsurance and coverage limits? So coinsurance instead of or in addition to paying a fixed amount upfront. So how it works is the coinsurance is a percentage of the total cost that insured person may also pay. Like for example, the member might have to pay 20% of the cost of the surgery over and above a copayment while the insurance company pays the other 80%. So, you know, if there is an upper limit on coinsurance, the policyholder could end up owing very little or a great deal, depending on the actual exclusions. Not all services are covered. The insured are generally expected to pay the full cost of non-covered services out of their own pockets. So this is a coinsurance. Coverage limits, um, the health plan will stop 
payment uh, when they reach the benefit maximum. So how it will go and the policyholder must pay all remaining cost of the services they obtain because how does it work is that some health insurance policies only pay for health care up to certain dollar amount, you know, and after that the insured person may be expected to pay any if there any charge or excess of the health plan maximum payment for specific services in addition some insurance companies schemes have annual or lifetime coverage maximums in these cases so the health plan will stop payment when they reach the benefit maximum so and then you know after that the policy holder uh, must pay all the remaining cost of the services and you, you know you will know that when the insurance companies uh, when you are getting your health insurance and all that they you know they ask so many questions from you your health then uh, you know how is your health your you know your past health and if you uh, are going through any surgical needs and all that because your insurance is going to be definitely high if you have some past condition already out of the pocket maximums capitation and in, in network provider in out of the pocket maximums can be limited to a specific benefit ca category such as prescription drugs or can apply to all coverage provided during a specific benefit year capitation is very important an amount paid by an insurer to a healthcare provider for which the provider agrees to treat all members of the insurer so you know this is the agreement uh, between the healthcare provider and the insurer and so it you know it definitely this is how the in-network and outer network things handle like if it's in network a healthcare provider on a list of provider pre-selected by the insurer insurer will offer discounted coinsurance because they have some contracts with these healthcare providers or co-payments or additional benefits to a plan member to see an in-network provider. Generally, providers in network are providers who have a contract with the insurer to accept rates further discounted from the usual and customary. Charges the insurer pays to out of pocket, uh, out of network providers. So, so they always uh, recommend you to find in network provider. Prior authorization and explanation of benefits. Prior authorization, obtaining an authorization means that the insurer is obligated to pay for the services, assuming it matches what was authorized. A certification or authorization that the insurer provide prior to medical services. Many smaller routine services does not require authorization. Provider agrees to treat all member of the insurer. Explanation of benefits, EOB a document that may be sent by an insurer to a patient explaining what was covered for a medical services and how payment amount and patient responsibility amount were determined so after your doctor visit and all that after if you made a you know co-payment and all that you came back home after two weeks or a month you will receive a eob and we call this eob uh, explanation of benefits you know how much was covered and how much insurance paid and you know, for your early benefits, how much is left behind. Broad classification of health insurance plans. So there are two types of plans. There are managed care plans, non-managed care plan. We will talk about managed, which is HMO, PPOs, and POS. HMO is health maintenance organization. PPOs is preferred provider organization. POS is point of service. HMO require primary care provider like PCP referrals and won't pay for care received out of network except in emergency. But they tend to have lower monthly premiums than plans that offer similar to benefits but come with fewer network restriction. HMO offered by employers often have lower cost sharing requirement deductibles, copies, and out-of-pocket, then PPO. So HMO sold in the individual insurance market often have out-of-pocket costs that are just as high as the available PPO. So everybody is involved in HMO. Um, it's like uh, the, the doctors and uh, uh, the nurses, hospitals, uh, 
um, all participates in the business arrangement uh, and it's called known as HMO. And HMO provide medical treatment on a prepaid basis, which means that HMO members pay a fixed monthly fee regardless of how much medical care is needed in a given month. So it's a very preferable uh, care plan and it has low out of pocket cost and then focus on wellness and preventive care. So it is a very famous uh, plan. So PPO, Preferred Provider Organization. And PPO got that name because they have a network of provider as well too. Uh, like an HMO, a Preferred Provider Organization. And uh, they have um, some benefits as well. Like they, they have free choice of healthcare provider. PPO members are not required to seek care from PPO physician. However, there is generally strong financial incentive to do so. Um, but you know they have that flexibility and their out of pocket cost generally is limited as well too and um, they do have a disadvantage of less coverage for treatment provided by the ppo physicians and then more paperwork and expenses than hmo and uh, it's it's expensive uh, they tend to have a higher monthly premiums and sometimes require higher cost sharing too but um, um, they said that in some states, PPO have disappeared altogether in the individual insurance market. Individual insurance, like you know, uh, your own in uh, private insurance, you can buy it on including through the exchange in your state, as opposed to obta obtaining from an employer. EPO is exclusive provider organization. Got that name because they have a network of provider they use exclusively. You must stick to provider on that list or the EPO won't pay. However, an EPO generally won't make you get a referral from a primary care physician in order to visit a specialist. Think of an EPO as similar to a PPO, but without coverage for out-of-network care. And uh, point of service, POS plan resemble to HMO, but are less restrictive in that in HMO you have to going as you know certain in network people so you are allowed under certain circumstances to get care out of network as you would with the ppo like hmo many pos plans require you to have a pcp refer for all care whether it's in or out of network so that was a managed uh, care plan like um we call this um, HMO, PPO, EPO, POS. And the non-managed uh, care plans are called intimidity plans. These are health plans that don't have provider networks and simply reimburse a portion of your charges for any covered medical service Intimidity plans, also known as conventional plans, they have fallen out of favor over the last few decades and are very rare. And less than 1% of US employees with employer sponsored health insurance has uh, intimidity plans in 2019. So dental intimidity plans are still fairly common, but virtually all commercial major medical plan utilized managed care. So, you know, you need to know these managed non-managed care plans and uh, um, as a business analyst you need to know a few things so we already talk about the health insurance we already talk about health care we already talk about provider uh, patient payer uh, and managed care plans non-managed care plans and uh, you know and the expenses uh, are involved in the insurance. So now we are moving towards the claim sector. But when uh, we are moving towards the claim sector, you need to know what is NPI. Uh, this is National Provider Identifier. The NPI is a unique identification number for healthcare providers. So that will be used by all health plans, healthcare providers, and all health plans and healthcare clearing houses will use the NPI in the administrative and financial transactions specified by HIPAA. So they proposed eight position alphanumeric identifier, many preferred 10 position numeric identifier with a check digit in the last position to help 
detect keying errors. I will show you how they look like. So always remember that the NPI must be used in connection with the electronic transactions identified in HIPAA. And this transaction happened through EDI system, electronic data interchange. Remember we talk about EHR, EMR, electronic healthcare records, electronic medical records. Now we are talking about EDI. So EDI, which allow the electronic exchange of information from computer to computer, so there is no human involvement uh, is in there. So uh, they are the transaction in electronic business document under HIPAA, a handful of standard formats are they are replacing like HCFA 1500 claim file will be replaced by 12,387 claim in count on transaction. So each of the HIPAA transaction has a name, a number and a business or administrative use. So let me show you how they look like. So NPI transaction number and business use the chart look like this. So if you will look at the transaction, it's saying claim and encounter. So they have an NPI number, which is X12-837. And for the business use, like for submitting claims to health plans, insurers, or other pairs. So again, eligibility inquiry and response, they have another number. For claim status inquiry and response, they have another NPI number. So they are all, uh, these all numbers are attached to certain transactions. So if you know all these numbers, so you, you know, you know the transaction and you know the business use they are using it. So health claims attachment, healthcare payment and remittance advice, referrals and prior authorization, they have these. So this is how, uh, these are like, you know, code numbers and all that they use it in NPI and it is affiliated by HIPAA as well too. So that's all. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, claim processes in our next video and uh, I hope uh, whatever I covered in this video was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like my video and share and subscribe and have a great day.